This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn to Boston, where Mayor Michelle Wu joined federal officials Tuesday to respond to the march through downtown Boston Saturday, led by 100 members of the white supremacist Patriot Front, carrying shields and a banner that read, Reclaim America. Officials claim the Boston Regional Intelligence Center had no warning they were coming. Local anti-fascist activists confronted the marchers. Mayor Wu also said the Boston Police Civil Rights Unit is investigating how Patriot Front members were seen attacking a local black artist and musician named Charles Morell, as police looked on. Charles Morell posted online about the attack, writing, quote, "'Just another day in the office. Yesterday, as I was walking to work, a group of white men wearing masks and holding military weapons were marching on the sidewalk. I was walking past the historic Copley Hotel. I thought it was odd that a protest was happening on the sidewalk and not the street. When I tried to get my phone to record the masked mob, this happened. See photos,' he said. He went on, now fake bot accounts are in my DM and on my social media pages trying to instill fear into myself and community. I assume these are the same masked white men. I share this to first say things have not changed much. Secondly, this is why I do the work that I do with passion, Charles Morell wrote. Charles is not doing interviews while he seeks legal advice, but he did speak out Monday. I am appalled that, even as a healer, I have to get my, my cup poured into in this incident. But in this incident, I will continue to pour into other people's cup as a way to pour into my own cup. For more, we're joined by three guests. In Boston, Kev Reverend Kevin Peterson, longtime civil rights activist, founder of the New Democracy Coalition, advisor to Charles Morell, is with us. In Cambridge, Philip Martin, an award-winning journalist and senior investigative reporter for GBH News Center for Investigative Reporting, where he recently wrote a piece headlined, It's Happening Here. Massachusetts has a growing neo-Nazi movement. And still with us, Michael Edison Hayden, senior investigative reporter with the Southern Poverty Law Center, who focuses on Internet radicalization and far-right extremism. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Reverend Peterson, let's begin with you. Explain, I'm sorry we can't have Charles Morell on today, but you are his close friend and advisor. Can you tell us more about what happened on Saturday? Uh, I th I'm not sure if I can tell you more about, uh, about what happened beyond what you've already said, but we do know that uh, Mr. Morell uh, is currently traumatized. Uh, uh, he has a focus around racial healing uh, in this city. Uh, he uses it through the arts. Uh, he believes that this uh, is an opportunity where he can uh, redirect uh, the trauma that he experienced in terms of engaging these uh, children of the KKK on Saturday, use that experience to uh, engage the city, particularly uh, Mayor Wu, in terms of changing things around, changing the narrative of the city. Boston is uh, not unlike uh, other places across the United States with regard to endemic racism. Uh, Boston was founded uh, during the slave trade. Uh, the legacy of, uh, of slavery and systemic uh, oppression uh, towards black people uh, persists even into 2022, uh, just two weeks ago, the Boston City Council uh, apologized for its complicity in the slave trade and ongoing systemic oppression. Mr. Morell's uh, uh, experience is reflected of that systemic uh, uh, oppression. Uh, the, this, is, this environment in Boston, I believe, provided uh, a, uh, a way through which, or rationale through which, uh, these uh, children of the KKK came into Boston to, to try to spew uh, their toxin uh, and their hate. Reverend Peterson, how did the police respond? Where were they when Charles was being attacked? Well, Mr. DeMarrell's uh, narrative is that the police were in uh, close proximity uh, to him. And, in fact, um, uh, Mr. Morell uh, suggests that uh, he engaged the police uh, for help, uh, but that help uh, at that point was, was it forthcoming. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, at this point, um, uh, different narratives coming from the administration, from the police, from Mayor Wu, uh, and Mr. Morell's account. I'm, I'm, um, I'm confident to say that I've had a number of conversations with Mr. Morell, and he's clear that the police were present. Uh, he asked for help. Uh, the police officer, or one of them, 
uh, claimed that uh, they were overwhelmed and they couldn't respond to uh, the assault that took place uh, uh, on him. Uh, that's disturbing. Even more disturbing is the fact that um, uh, such an organized um, uh, group of uh, white supremacists, the children of the KKK, uh, descended on the uh, city and marched through the streets with, uh, with, um, with uh, brazen uh, activity, uh, unmonitored for the most part by law enforcement. It left uh, thousands of uh, black citizens, of course, vulnerable to any kind of racial violence that they uh, would have uh, fostered. And in fact, uh, Mr. Morrell became a victim of that racial violence. And we're showing video from Twitter of these people who have, like, khaki pants, which, of course, reminds me of the University of Virginia Unite the Right it rally, uh, and dark shirts, either long sleeve or short sleeved, and then white uh, masks over their faces and baseball caps. Um, Philip Martin, uh, you're with GBH News. You wrote an extended piece in May uh, called It's Happening Here. Massachusetts has a growing neo Nazi movement. Now, the mayor, Michelle Wu, said they had no idea these people were coming this weekend. Um, but this is the third March this year. Explain how you see this movement growing. What's happening? Why Boston? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here, Amy. Um, <clears throat> and um, I, I find it, I'm a bit incredulous um, that the uh, Boston. Health uh, the mayor, others seem to have been taken by surprise. Granted that this was a um, demonstration, they should not have been surprised uh, taking part in uh, flash um, uh, exits on freeways, holding banners over freeways, uh, leaving graffiti everywhere, defacing Black Lives Matter signs. Uh, fr across the state, uh, including Brockton, not uh, not long ago, uh, there have been uh, reported assaults uh, by this group and a, and a similar group, uh, NSC-131, uh, for a long time. And so uh, I can see uh, the, the this as a without question they 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 did not know about this. It seems. Uh, but uh, to, be, to be taken by surprise, uh, is, I'm, in, I'm incredulous over that, given the growing activity of these organizations over the, over the past few years. Uh, and you, you cited it correctly with the Unite the Right uh, rally that you mentioned. That's where the Patriot Front began uh, by this, uh, this individual, Thomas Rousseau. And what's happening in Boston is not that dissimilar from what's happening around the country. But a unicorn riot, uh, a treasure trove of documents revealed that Massachusetts and England uh, is, uh, are, are the areas that they consider prime recruiting grounds, uh, despite the, uh, the region's reputation this, uh, for liberalism. Uh, as Reverend uh, Peters was just pointing out, there are multiple contradictions that make their presence here uh, the game in this community, though there's also, I should point out, massive pushback against, uh, against these groups, against Patriot Front, uh, by people on the ground, uh, Jewish organizations, black organizations, anti-fascists, uh, academics, others. Uh, so they are not getting a, a, a warm reception. Thus, the reason I believe they decided to s descend on the area over the weekend, it gave them the attention they wanted. Uh, they are in competition with NSC-131, but also in collusion with them. NSC-131 has uh, had a presence uh, in the area, uh, protesting at Brigham and Women's Hospital in January, uh, uh, taking part in a demonstration at the St. Patrick's Day Parade uh, in March, where they displayed a um, Boston is uh, returned Boston to the Irish um, uh, sign or something to that effect. And so, again, this, uh, Amy, is something that has been taking place. Uh, it is a growing movement, growing uh, as ascertained by observation from those who study uh, fascism, uh, that this, these are groups that, that had two or three people at rallies uh, maybe a year ago, three years ago, and now uh, uh, are, are able to get, three, uh, get, get 30 people at rallies, people largely from this area, though this 100 who had just on Boston over the weekend, without question, 
they came from various parts of the country, and it's believed that That's Thomas right. Rousseau was was among them. Mm -hmm. That Rousseau was among them, which brings me to, back to Michael Edison Hayden. Michael, you were the Southern Poverty Law Center. We last had you on, giving us background on the Patriot Front. So talk more about who Rousseau is, how this group was founded, what it's doing, why in Boston and before that, what, there are protests in Philadelphia, these uh, historic American cities. Michael. Phenomenon. I like that. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Oh sure, um, you know I like that phrase "children of the KKK." That was uh, that was great. Um, you know I, I think that they are not the KKK yet, but they um, in its heyday. But uh, boy, do they want to be! And um, you know th there was a group called Vanguard America that marched at Unite the Right, and you may remember uh, James Fields who murdered Heather Hare. Um, he actually marched with that group, and they kind of rebranded under this this you know this veil of patriotism, um, and kind of to, to to try to pull from the Republican Party shtick, um, and 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 make a more marketable version of what is essentially neo-Nazism, and um, they've had some success uh, at building a movement across the country. They've had people across the country. Um, they have absolutely, um, you know, been successful at doing these marches where there are about, uh, you know, anywhere between 30 and 100 people uh, marching on the street. Um, but, yeah, they did something also on July 4th last year um, or in the July 4th uh, weekend uh, regarding, uh, you know, in Philadelphia, for example, um, they are picking these places that have historical importance um, in the United States. Uh, you know, their slogan is Reclaim America, and it's this idea of restoring America to their imagined past. This, um, well, certainly America does have a deeply racist past, but they envision this perfect um, version of the United States that is going to come from their activism that's going to be uh, essentially just a white supremacist ethnostate. And how do they organize online? Yeah, I mean, they, ha you know, they're all over Telegram. Uh, they were using uh, Discord. Uh, they are essentially um, building little cells across the country and communicating with each other this way. They don't so often uh, reveal their names to one another until, uh, you know, they get to know each other in person. Um, they are trying to lock down uh, their communications. But quite frankly, they've been poor at it. Uh, because they are frequently getting ID'd by anti-fascist activists all over the country and also by uh, our organization. And their connection to January 6th, the Patriot Front members marching part of the President Trump's uh, um, insurrection? Uh, no, they were, so so they are superficially uh, anti-Trump. They're superficially anti-Republican Party, but they work kind of in tangent with the Republican Party in the sense that they run parallel to them. You know, for people uh, that, that believe that Trump is too cozy with Jewish people, um, uh, the Patriot Front is there to kind of recruit you. It is there. Um, they do essentially the same things. They're, you know, you see uh, Stephen Miller's America First Legal is going to be attacking all kinds of things that he describes as woke. What does that really mean? It's uh, LGBTQ plus. Uh, rights, um, right, stuff like, uh, you know, um, th this uh, critical race theory uh, boogeyman that they keep trotting out, whatever else. Um, it's the, sort of the same stuff that Patriot Front is talking about, but this is for people who are further along the line of ra radicalization and don't want to associate themselves with the Republican Party. But they absolutely work in tandem with them, and they and, run parallel to them. And Philip Martin of GBH News, you report about this, that members were represented in D.C. during the insurrection. That's right. This is, of course, before they branded themselves, rebranded themselves as Patriot Front. Uh, and uh, and you had members of NSC 131 present. What does uh, NSC they, stand for? Course, Nationalist Social Club. Uh, and the 131 is Alford Numeric Code for Anti Communism. Uh, they consider, of course, anyone anti communist. They consider anyone communist, whether they be uh, a liberal, a moderate, uh, a so called rhino within the Republican Party, uh, people advocating for equality, uh, the, the notion of communism.
they uh, uh, have in, incorporated <clears throat> into their talking points uh, in which they see uh, anyone, again, who oppose <clears throat> fascism uh, as, um, as communists. But they are, they're neo-Nazis. Uh, they are described as a small army of neo-Nazis uh, by both the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Anti-Defamation League. Um, and so, yes, they're, they're, they, they started off uh, in, um, in Charlottesville. Uh, they have, uh, Thomas Rousseau has attempted to grow this movement based on some of the grievances uh, that uh, we're, uh, my colleague from Southern Poverty Law Center was just talking about, <clears throat> within, uh, that have been amplified by the Republican Party. They have been amplified and, uh, and animated by the so-called theory of, of and believing that that is something that people are, in fact, reacting to. And you can see some of the comments uh, that appear uh, on social media where, in fact, um, uh, here in Boston, uh, you've, you found individuals who were condemning the Patriot Front, but you also found uh, comments on Twitter and, so, and Facebook. Folks were saying, well, what about the communists? What about the Democratic Party? What about, uh, 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 what about the Antifa? What about Black Lives Matter? Where they basically try to create this false equivalency uh, that these groups, uh, the Patriot Front and others, are simply the flip side. And, and thus they have, and it's mythical, and, and uh, the whole notion of, the, of, of, of both sidisms in the context of fascism. Uh, and, but, and, in, but anyway, the point here—I'm I'm sorry, go on. And, Philip, mm -hmm. the role of the police, uh, the reverend describing or actually Charles Morell himself saying they didn't help him, and the mayor saying they had no idea this was happening. I think we're going to have—we will end it there. We have to be incredulous of whether if if the if the police were nearby and they did nothing, that's a problem. If the police were not uh, in the proximity to where these uh, where this man was being beaten, uh, then that's uh, then that's a problem also. It means that they really weren't monitoring well uh, this procession of neo fascists through downtown Boston on Fourth of July weekend. And finally, Reverend Kevin Peterson, you know, a news conference was hauled with, with called with black leaders. You were among them. Yes. What are you calling for now? Well, we're 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 um, we're calling uh, uh, for a couple things. One is as much as the uh, police department is uh, investigating uh, what crime occurred, uh, what civil rights um, uh, were uh, were violated uh, against uh, Mr. Morell. We're also calling uh, for uh, Boston, uh, or the police or the mayor, to um, conduct an internal vet, uh, investigation in terms of um, police activities on that day on site. Were there police present? Uh, we're asked for the release of uh, videotape from Starbucks, which, which captured the incidents, to perhaps identify more succinctly if the police were present. We're asking for any body camera uh, 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 Visuals that might be might be present. Beyond that, uh, Amy, we're 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 asking the mayor to um, to uh, take a deep dive into um, engaging in uh, more robust conversations around race in this in a city that has been dogged by race uh, for so long. Uh, those pictures of Mr. Mr. Morell uh, are um, reflective of uh, uh, the, the racial legacy in, in in the city of Boston that that persists. Beyond the conversation, we also call for a race commission, uh, where the city of Boston will bring to fore the, the, the uh, enormous resources uh, in the city of Boston in terms of the academic and legal community uh, to uh, explore the legacy of racism uh, up until 2022, uh, provide information perhaps throughout uh, uh, the schools, but throughout the neighborhoods, of course, so that um, the residents of Boston more, can more learn more about what racism is and how it uh, how it is uh, impactful in its subtle and most obvious ways, uh, and then we ask for um, the commission to look into what would constitute um, repair or reparations in the city of Boston. How do we address the historic wrongs uh, fostered upon um, black black people as it relates to the legacy of slavery and systemic uh, oppression? Uh, how do we address those issues of unequal uh, uh, housing, 
uh, situations with relation to black? How do we address the unequal health morbidities? How do we address uh, income inequality with regard to black and white uh, in the city of Boston? Those things are enormous. They reflect a, um, an incredible uh, gap in terms of how blacks uh, maintain their lives in Boston against um, the uh, privilege of white lives or how whites uh, are uh, privileged. Well, uh, so we ask for something comprehensive, uh, something uh, carefully thought through. We ask the mayor to move beyond uh, the soothing words uh, and apologies and get to some substantive um, uh, policies and actions that um, that brings Boston into the uh, the the uh, uh, the current uh, situation where we're trying to address the issue of Reverend uh, Kevin racism Peterson, in a more substantive way. We want to thank, thank you so much for being with us, founder of the New Democracy Coalition, speaking to us from Boston. Philip Martin, investigative reporter with GBH News, will link to your pieces. Um, it's happening here. Massachusetts has a growing neo-Nazi movement, and your latest piece. And Michael Edison Hayden with the Southern Poverty Law Center.